you everybody for coming today. It's really great. I'm not going to use the microphone. Thank you yeah. for coming. Oh gosh, it's my pleasure. You know, uh, being an actor is like uh, one of the, the, the best things in the world because you, like everything in life, you do what you love and, you know, uh, live with passion and joy. And when you bring people, the pleasure to people, it just makes it all it so fantastically worthwhile. You know, I don't have like a slideshow or anything, you know. Uh, Chris is amazing, he does these amazing slideshows and acting and voicing things. But I, I, I would just talk to you, um, and, and there'll be space for a lot of uh, questions anytime you want. So, did, were a lot of you people here last year? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody not here last year? Okay, that's good. That's, in that case, I get to say a few things about what I said, the repeat of last year. <laughs> a little bit. You know, one of the most common questions to me is, you know, how did you get the, the job? And, and, I, and I will tell you how I got the job. Because it's really true. You know, I, I, had, uh, I started as an actor when I was 20 years old. I, 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 I'll give you the long version of, of all this because I had absolutely no intention of being an actor. I was absolutely terrified and shy and the idea of standing in front of people, there, there's no way I could have done that when I was 20 years old or 18 years old. There's just no way because I was petrified of, you know, gosh, what are people going to think? And, uh, you know, I'm awkward and skinny. And, you know, at the time I was, the time I was skinny. I mean, <laughs> so much I made up for lost time, you know. But I was like, when I was uh, 16, I was like five feet four or something like that, the shortest guy in the school, or four feet nine, I was just this little guy. And then in two years, at six, 18, I was like that tall, but I didn't gain any weight, you know, so I was like, what? You know? So, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but a friend of mine was going to go to law school, and I thought, I'll just go to law school too, and I'll be a lawyer, and we'll have a practice together, and we'll, you know, and, you know, and I went to college at, at Cal Berkeley, and I'm studying away, and I had a favorite teacher in the whole wide world, couldn't get... The, any classes from this guy, he was the only professor I ever had in my life who said he was political theory, and he said, okay, what is the nature of man according to Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, and, and everybody has a, a view of the nature of man, and so, what is yours? You know, and he, so first year, first half that they find was writing down without what, he, what everyone else said, and then, and then it was the first time in my life anyone asked me what I thought in, in academia. And I'm like, this is the greatest teacher ever. All my classes I want to be with this guy, and I could never get another class with him. So I... I, I, I quit. I dropped out of college. It's not a Bill Gates story or a, a, a Steve Jobs story, but you know, I, I, I was not happy and I was willing to, to wait until I could get into those classes again. But in the meantime, I, I, a friend of mine said, you know, come and take an acting class for me. And I said, no, no, wait a minute. There is no way I will ever stand in front of people. There's no way, I'm, I'm way too shy for this. And I don't know how, but he talked me into it. And you know, I remember the first time I did the monologue, it was, it was from the Spoon River Anthology. It's a bunch of dead people coming back from the death and talking about how they died. You know, it's just like the most miserable, rotten. <laughs> it's just terrible, you know, it's, it's terrible. So I, you know, but I, I like, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, and I did my monologue. And, and I remember I, I get up there to do my monologue that I had memorized. And my right leg was shaking like that. I'm like, oh my gosh, my right leg is shaking. Everybody must be able to see this, so I'll put my weight on it. And then my left leg starts shaking like that, and I'm going like, like this, and I'm like, okay, put your weight in the middle. And I put my weight, and I, I open my spine, and then they're both going like this. And, and this is what I think you're seeing as I'm talking, you know? And, and, but, but I finished my monologue. I lived. I thought for sure I'd be dead by the end of it, because I was horrified of being in front of people. And sure enough, uh, people go, oh, that was really nice. Gee, you're the only person who wasn't nervous. And I'm like, what? You know, wait, wait, which, which room were you in? But it, they, they didn't perceive it, you know? And, and I thought, that's amazing. And that, you know, and I still thought I was terrible. And, I, and I'm sure it was. But I kept trying to overcome that fear and anxiety of being in front of people. And I started feeling that I'm pretty good at this, you know? And, but, the, but then, you know, uh, the, the school was coming along and, and auditioning for the school play, um, Midsummer Night's Dream. I love this play. I love Shakespeare. And I, I thought, I'm perfect for Oberon. Okay, so here I am, you know, 20 years old, a beanpole, and Oberon is a, you know, but, but I think it's, I'm perfect for it. And I study, 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 study. I do this monologue. I go out there, and it's like, okay, you know, and I do my monologue, and then we all watch each other do their monologues, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I got this for sure. 
I, I, got, I got this. I not only didn't get it, I didn't get anything in the play. <laughs> I didn't even get to walk onto the sign, you know, you know, nothing, zero. So it's sort of like that was the thing that lit the fire in me and said, you know, okay, I'm going to get back into this and I, or get into this. So I took, a, I took a speech class and we did a speech tournament. So we won the, I won the state championship and the national championship and then Berkeley Rep came along and auditioned for something because I, I started just absolutely loving what I was doing, loving performing, loving creating a role or, you know, taking on a role. And, and Berkeley Rep came along and uh, had this audition for an apprenticeship program. And it was a professional theater. I'm like, woohoo, you know. <laughs> and I go and it's the same people auditioning. And I auditioned with the monologue of Oberon. And I got into the apprenticeship and nobody else did. So... <laughs> But you know, I had the, the, the story of that little piece is basically everything in your age bracket, whatever age bracket you are, you have fear, anxiety, and it's like, oh my God, I can't. But the truth is you really can. And when you break through your fears and you start living, you know, more of what you love to do, that's the, the, the guarantee in life, and I guess I shouldn't use the word guarantee, but things happen that you never would predict in a million years. And a person, you know, but, but your commitment to your own happiness brings that onto you. You know, if I would say, if I could say anything to anybody, that's it. So I became an actor, I, you know, so I worked at Brickley Rep and I went to school in, in England for uh, studying acting and then left school and uh, became an actor in the Bay Area. Finished doing about 10 years of theater and said, okay, I can't do this anymore. I don't, I'm not having fun anymore. So then luckily somebody calls me up and says, hey, why don't you come and do some corporate video auditions? And I start doing corporate video auditions. They pay more in a week than I was making in a, you know, a, 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 in a day than I was making in a week. All of a sudden I'm doing corporate videos and then, you know, one day I'm, I'm doing like a commercial where I'm standing there with a pitchfork in my hand, you know, <laughs> the, the American Gothic picture and my wife was there, you know. And I don't, you know, it's so funny because it was a, 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 a Orchard Supply hardware commercial. It was a 15 second local spot. And we finished that, and the guy goes, great, can you do the voiceover? And I said, well, sh of course. What's a voiceover? You know, I <laughs> no idea. You know, I didn't, I mean, I know obviously when you think about it, but I'm like, yes, what's that? And you know, he gave me the copy, he goes, hey, just read that, but it has to be in time. I said, Orchard Supply hardware, the right item at the right price, right now. <laughs> Perfect, great, here's another hundred dollars, you know? It's like, wow, this is fun, you know? So then I started doing voiceover, and I'm doing voiceover, and then, you know, as, as each thing happens in life, and then suddenly I'm doing trade shows, and a friend of mine calls me up, I think I was on the beach, and he goes, hmm, and I love trade shows because you get to fly somewhere and do, you know, represent, you know, inside the 4868 multi-processing computer of Amdahl, we have 48 vectors of, you know, things you know nothing about, but you say, you, know, you get to be the expert, and then someone says, excuse me, can I ask you a question? No, uh, wait till later, and then I'll bring the experts out, you know, so, you know, <laughs> you're faking like you know stuff, you know, and so what could be more fun than that, you know, and I think, you know, because you're all these computer scientists. Well, I disagree with the fourth sentence you have. You know, I'll, well, we'll talk about that later because everything's on an ear prompter. So I'm hearing it and saying it as though I know what I'm talking about, and I know <laughs> nothing. I, people still ask me, you know, questions. You know, like HTTP. What is that? I said I have no idea. It's it's how you get on the web. So so there I you know there I am living my little life, having a great time being an actor. And I get this phone call on the beach. Hey, Charles, there's an audition for a trade show in Las Vegas. You gotta go do it. And I'm like, there is absolutely no way that I'm gonna go crash an audition. I'm a professional. I don't do that. What's the address? And, <laughs> you know, because when you're a professional, you're hungry no matter what. It's like, oh, work, okay, wahoo, you know? And, uh, you know, I, I, I had uh, done many parts in the theater for, you know, 75 plays, and I'd done, you know, all these things. and. I, 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 I get myself off the beach. I, I go over to the, to the place at South of Market on Folsom Street. And I remember like parking and then walking and I open the door and like the producer and the camera guy are on their way out the door, right? Because they, they were done. They had done the, and I'm like, can I, can I please audition for this? And the producer goes, oh, oh, all right, all right, all right. Um, we'll set up the camera and you, uh, sort of like, you're, 
you're, you're going to be doing this real-time animation system where this character, Mario, is going to talk to people in real time. And you're going to have these things glued to your face and this thing that makes him fly around the screen. And we have absolutely no idea whether this is going to work or not. But theoretically, you, you should be able to say, hello, and the character should say hello. So if it doesn't work, you still got to talk to people all day long. So make up a voice, Italian plumber from Brooklyn, and make up a video game. And you start talking, and whenever you stop talking, that's your audition. And I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking, you know, Italian plumber from Brooklyn. Well, that year, hey, how you doing? I'm on the East Wing. Don't bother me. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not going to be fun. Like, you know, what if there are kids there? You know, and it, it, what, 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 you know, I, I'm a huge believer that life has lessons. You know, and I, I had met this uh, this guy in acting school who had a terrible study. My first acting class, he had a terrible study. And I stutter. And I, one day I, I said, you know, have you, have you always had this stutter? And he said, no, I was at a, 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 a comedy show. And, and uh, I was singled out by the comedian. I had acne, I was young. And, and he humiliated me in front of everybody. And I was so embarrassed. And I just ran and I had it hid in my, my room. And I woke up the next day with a stutter. And so, you know, uh, to me, it's like, in life you get marks. You, if you're paying attention, you get marks about what makes a difference. So, so for me, uh, any comedy or any improvisation or any just talking to people, my rule was then, unspoken to me, but not known by me, I will never do comedy that hurts people. I will never say something in front of people that is hurtful or singles out a person. Because it's so important, the impact that you make in life. So, I'm not thinking that, I'm thinking, so what is an Italian plum from Brooklyn? Of oh, course, like that. But I played Grammy when Taming of the Shrew, uh, uh, like ten years before, eight years before, and in a show, and he's like, ah, nice show it that in the guy, don't go like these. And I thought, hey, that could be kind of fun if I make it younger and you know a little bit more peppy. And but uh, but a, a video game, oh, I know absolutely nothing about video games. I remember in college I played Tank with my friend and always lost. You know, and it's like you're going like one mile per six years. You're like, <laughs> System, and meanwhile, he's going, dunk, 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 and shooting away your berries. I got, ah, you know, and, and I played Space Invaders, you know, and Asteroids, you know, and I, I, I was terrible. I was always terrible at these games. And, 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 waka, 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 I suppose. You know? And so I thought, but I don't know anything about video games, but I guess I'll just start talking, and, you know, I'll just, I'll see, I'm just going to have fun, because that's my other conviction in life, is have fun, because it's so easy to do things in life by obligation and duty, you know, I have to go to work, seven days, blah, 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 blah. and it's true, we have to make money, but how do you do it? You have fun, so, excuse me, so I, um, I, 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 I'm thinking, well, I'll just make things up, and I'll try this other voice, and I'll just, maybe I'll talk about, and all of a sudden I hear action, and I turn to the camera and say, hello, I'm a Mario, okie dokie, let's make a pizza pie together, you go get some sausage, I'm going to get some of spaghetti, we're going to put a spaghetti and a sausage in the pizza, then I'm going to chase you the pizza, if I catch you the pizza, you're going to chase me with the pizza, okie dokie, and then if you catch me the pizza, we're going to make a spaghetti meet the balls, I'm going to chase you with the spaghetti meet the balls, if I catch you the spaghetti meet the balls, you're going to, you know, and I have no idea where exactly I went, but I just, you know, I'm sitting there talking and I'm expecting the guy to go, okay, stop talking, you know, and he, and he doesn't. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm having fun. If you're having fun, I'll just keep going. So, I, you know, I just go on and on, change kitchen sink. <laughs> and then I'm going to end up take the house off the floor of the foundation and chase with the house, you know. And, and I just kept talking until I, I, I it about, apparently it was like 30 to 40 minutes. Time flies when you're having fun, you know. So, and, and he goes, cut, stop, stop talking. There's, there's no more tape. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be in touch. You know, and I'm thinking of an actor, that's like the kiss of death. Oh, that was great. We'll be in touch. You know, it's like a goodbye, you know. There, that means uh, there's the door. You know? So I'm like, okay, thank you very much. You know, and I'm like, oh, sunset. You know, go like, I like sunset. So I go watch the sunset. And I'm like, that was really fun. And apparently, I, you know, I, I walked out the door. He called up Don James at Nintendo and said, I found our Mario. And my videotape was the only tape that they sent up of all the tapes that they had done. <laughs> began a, a journey that I had absolutely no idea could possibly be uh, this fun. You know, uh, uh, 
the, the, like we started with this real-time animation system, and you know, at a trade show, that we had a computer like that big, we had dry ice on it because it's it's doing crunching these calculations at a million miles a minute, and and I, you know, and it freezes every once in a while, and it freezes with the character always like. <laughs> you know, so I take that, I fly the edge, so all you can see is the eyeballs. Oh yeah, I'm having a great time, we'll see you in a minute. You know, so there's there some, some things to overcome, but we just had a great time with it for so many years. And, and, and then in 1996, I get a call from the guys at Nintendo, and they say, and, and they say every time I see Mr. Miyamoto walk by the monitor, I say, Papa! You know? <laughs> Like the thing to say, you know, it's like like everything. It always seems like the thing to say, you know. Uh, and, and so he uh, requested that I do the voice in in Mario 64, which was one of the most fun days of my life, or two <laughs> days of my life, being in a session and seeing this amazingly wonderful character running around and putting sounds to him, putting the yeah, oh, give me go, yeah, oh yeah, thank you very much for playing my game, you know. And, and of course, my favorite thing is that, well, you know, when you put down the controller, we've got to figure out what to do because if you don't pick it up, you know, so you know, maybe he goes to sleep. And I'm like, oh, oh, how about, how about, how about, how about? spaghetti, ravioli. <laughs> Peach, you know, so it just you know these things just just happen, and I, I will say, working with Nintendo, uh, it has been the absolute joy, honor, profound <coughs> happiness in in my life, and it's what I would wish for each and every one of you to to pursue your happiness, pursue your your dreams. You know, at, at certain ages, like I, I can guarantee you, I had no idea what I was going to do in my life. I you know I'm you know my mom goes. Well, honey, you can do anything. I'm like, yeah, all right, mom. You know, but it's it's true. You know, moms know what they're talking about. You can do anything. So my wish for you is is to pursue your dreams, pursue your vision. It, life will necessarily not look like exactly what you think it will, but when you're when happiness is your goal and that's your your aim and your drive, expressing your love for life, expressing your love for humanity, when that's your focus, then it, it doesn't matter what you do, it's, it's how you do it. And maybe that's what life is about, it's how you do it. So my wish for everybody is totally to do what you love. You know, you, you may say, I'm going to be a voice actor, I want to be a voice actor. And you, and you know, some people have talent for it, some people don't have talent for it. But you can still do it and maybe you won't make a, a, a living with it. But then maybe someone goes, oh, you know, we're, gonna, we're trying to put this radio spot together, will you help us do it? And, and maybe you cut it together and you go, wow, that was fun cutting it together. I, I'm going to try that again, you know, and then you, suddenly you find that you're an editor. But you're still doing the business that you love and finding the, the expansion of joy that is what life is all about, is finding that expansion of joy. And it always comes from commitment of, of yourself, you know. And for me, to not to lecture about life because I certainly don't have the answers of life, but introspection is a good thing, you know. Who am I? What do I do? Why do I do it? Because if you want to be an actor, those are the exact questions that you ask, uh, coincidentally, of your character. What, what, who is he? What is he doing? Why does he make this choice, you know? And with, with Mario, it's, it's a great, fun thing because uh, I love the princess. I'm going to rescue the princess. I'm going to have fun. Yahoo! You know, <laughs> the answers to the questions are there. there. And, and, and what an absolute joy. It, this is... My favorite character in the whole wide world, and and doing it, working with and Mr. Miyamoto to me is such an amazing creative genius, and, and he has this incredible support structure of great artists and great visionaries who who you know it, it's like they were it's like we're all a bunch of uh, 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 you know we're all on the surfboard riding the wave into shore and having a great time in the process. And people love working with Nintendo so much that work there that you like. Super Mario Galaxy was, is created, and it's this incredible game, and, and what, what do they do? Well, they say, we're having so much fun, and they keep making, inventing things until Mr. Miyamoto goes, wait a minute, if you guys are having so much fun, and you're having, look at these great creations, let's make Super Mario Galaxy 2. Wahoo! You know? <laughs> and there it is, you know, the highest rated video game in history, for, you know, which is like, it's such a tribute to, to uh, what I believe, uh, loving what you do and doing it with passion and joy, uh, with the intention of 
uh, creating fun and expressing the love you have for life and joy and your work in front of you. And if you want to be a garbage man, if you want to be a, you know, it doesn't matter, a plumber, it's do that with joy. So that's my theory of life. Thank you very much. <laughs>